It's the magic of math here, and today we're going to learn five ways to represent a function, a mapping diagram, an equation, using words, a table, and a graph. Here's our lesson. We're going to start by reviewing our objectives. Our first objective, you the student, will represent functions using words, mapping diagrams, input-output tables, graphs, and equations. You will also compare two functions, each represented in a different way. Here's the question I would like you thinking about today as I proceed through the lesson. What are the benefits to representing a function in different ways? Let's begin. So here are five ways to represent our function. So I have this graphic organizer here to organize our thoughts. We can see that the center is our equation. Then we can represent it in words, mapping diagram, a graph, a table, and it all connects back to our equation. So let's go ahead and start with an equation. This is a linear equation, y equals 2x plus 1. We're going to complete our graphic organizer and represent this function in five different ways. The first is the equation. So I think the best place to start is going to be with a table. So let's create a list of inputs and have you, you should have done this in previous lessons, that x is my independent variable, my input. You can pick any inputs that you want. I picked five, you might only pick three. So I picked zero, two negative values, and two positive values. So to review, we take our negative two for our x and input it into our equation. Two multiplied by negative two is negative four. Add one means an output, a y value of negative three. Input negative one, two multiplied by negative one is negative two. Add one is negative one. Input zero, anything multiplied by zero is zero. Add one for one. Input one, two plus one is three. Input two, two times two is four. Add one for an output of five. So here's our table of values. The next thing we want to do is write it in words. So here, this equation represents a line. We have a line that has an output that is one more than twice the input. So here's my output. It is one more than twice the input. All right, moving on to our mapping diagram. We're going to take our inputs from our table, write them in order from least to greatest, and then we're going to map them to their outputs. So the input negative 2 will map to an output of negative 3. Negative 1 maps to an output of negative 1. 0 maps to 1, 1 will map to 3, and 2 will map to 5. And we know that this is a function because each input has exactly one unique output. All right, now let's finish and do our graph. So we're going to take our points either from our mapping diagram or our table, or we could graph using the equation. Let's start by plotting these points. Negative two, negative three, negative one, negative one, zero, one, one, three, two, five, and graph our line. So we could also have used our equation and slope intercept form, a y-intercept of one, and then rise to, run one, rise to, run one for our slope. Or you could have graphed your inputs and outputs from your mapping diagram. But there you have it, five ways to represent this function. Now it's your turn. I've provided you with the graphic organizer and a mapping diagram. I would like you to pause the video here. I would like you to complete the other four representations. Go ahead and pause, come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. So using our mapping diagram, for me, the easiest thing to do would be to now go to my table. 
So I'm going to start by taking my inputs and writing them into my table. And then we're going to take everything that they're mapped to and bring them over our outputs. So now I have my table done. Next, I'm going to move over and graph all my inputs. So I can see that negative 2, negative 10 is not going to fit on my graph. Negative 1, negative 7 won't, but 0, negative 4 will. So 0, negative 4, here's my point. 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1, and 2, 2. 2, 2. So we really only need two points to graph a line, but three of our ordered pairs fit on the graph I provided you. It's okay that these aren't there. If we extended our graph, they would be. So now I have my table complete and my graph complete. So let's move on to the equation. So we're going to write this equation in slope-intercept form. We have a line. It's a linear function. So first we're going to identify the y-intercept where it crosses the y-axis. That is b in this equation. So we can see that b here is negative 4. Now we want to find m, our slope. So rise, we're going to rise 3, and run 1. So we can see rise over run, 3 over 1 is 3. So y equals 3x subtract 4 is the equation of this function. We could have also used our table. We could see that when our input is 0, that output represents our y-intercept. That's where the line will cross the y-axis. So we could see from here that b was negative 4. We could also find our slope from our table. So our y is our rise, our change in y. We can see that each output increases by 3, while each input is increasing by 1. So rise over run would be 3 over 1 or 3 y equals 3x subtract 4 is our equation. To write this in words, we're going to say that a line that has an output that is 4 less than 3 times the input. And there you have it, five ways to represent this function. Here's another one for you to try. We're asked which of the following representations shows a linear relationship with the greatest rate of change. You have four answer choices to pick from. Please pause the video here, do your best work, and then come back to see mine. Welcome back. So here's our solution. We want to find the function with the greatest rate of change. Rate of change is another word for slope. So we're going to identify the slope or rate of change for each of these four and determine which one is the greatest. A, we have a line that rises 12 units. For every four units, it moves to the right. So when we do slope, Rm, which is also rate of change, rise over run, we're told our rise is 12, and our run, which is left or right, this is going right, is 4. So it's going up and right, so that's positive, positive. 12 divided by 4 is 3. So the rate of change for this function in A is 3. Now let's look at our table in B. We're going to determine our slope once again, which is a ratio of our rise or vertical change over our run, our horizontal change. Your outputs represent the vertical or the rise. So from 5 to 7, we have an increase of 2, increase of 2, increase of 2, increase of 2. So our rise is 2. Now our run is our horizontal distance, or our change in x. From negative 6 to negative 2, we've increased by 4. Negative 2 to 2, also an increase of 4. 2 to 6, 6 to 10, also increases of 4. So we know our run is 4. To simplify this, 2 fourths simplifies to 1 half. So 1 half is less than 3, so we can eliminate answer choice B. Moving on to C. This is written in slope-intercept form, where we know that M represents our rate of change or our slope. M is the coefficient of the variable X. So our coefficient in this function 
is an invisible one. So we know that the slope or greatest rate of change here is one. One is less than three, so we can eliminate answer choice C. Looking at D, we have a graph. To find slope, I'm gonna identify two points on the line to find my ratio of rise over run. So here are two points on the line. We're gonna rise four and run one. So we have a ratio of four to one. So my slope in simplest form, four divided by one is four. Four is greater than three, so we can eliminate answer choice A, giving us answer D is the linear relationship with the greatest rate of change. Your turn. We have a real world problem here. We have John who wants to get internet for his home. He has been comparing two providers. Each internet provider charges a one-time installation fee in addition to a monthly rate. We have fast speed internet company that charges a one-time fee plus $65 per month. If John chooses fast speed internet company, he will pay $225 for the first three months. Reliable Internet Group also charges a one-time fee, plus $75 per month. The table shows the total cost, including the one-time fee, for the first three months. How much more money, in dollars, does Fast Speed Internet charge for the one-time fee than Reliable Internet Group? I'd like you to pause the video, answer the question, and come back and hit play to see my work. Welcome back. So here's our solution. We're trying to determine how much more money fast speed internet will charge for a one-time fee than reliable internet. So we have a function here of fast speed internet and reliable internet. Fast speed is given to us in words. Reliable has been given to us in a table. So let's go up and determine this one-time fee for fast speed internet. So fast speed internet charges a one-time fee plus $65 per month. John paid $225 for his first three months if he went with this company. So let's do $65 times three because he paid $65 for each of the three months. That is a total of $195. If his total bill was $225, we subtract the three monthly fees we can subtract and determine that our one-time fee was $30. So we know that fast speed internet has a one-time fee of $30 plus the $65 per month. Now let's look at Reliable Internet Company who also has a one-time fee plus $75 per month. So we can see that for month one to month two, we had an increase of $75. 170 to 245 from month two to three is also another increase of $75. So seeing as we see that we paid the first month $95, then $75 each month, we can see on month one, we paid our $75 fee per month plus the one-time fee of $20. So Reliable Internet had a one-time fee of $20, and we wanted to know how much more, so we can say that fast speed was $10 more than reliable. We can conclude that fast speed internet charges $10 more for the one-time fee than reliable internet. Now that's comparing a function given to us in words and in a table. And there you have it, five ways to represent a function, a mapping diagram, an equation, words, table, and a graph. I thank you for joining me today at The Magic of Math, where we continue to master math one video at a time. I hope you'll come back soon. Subscribe and have a great day.